what? Now they got, they had money to fly out there, they had money to put us in the hotel. So we had to stay in all these little, you know, Ray Ray house and Big Mama house. And so the house I'm staying over here, we stayed over here with one of the player's cousins. We go through here and we got three games paid on, it was on a Thursday night, Friday night, and a Saturday night. So we in there, and first of all, I don't know if Ray Ray knew we were coming. Because we, some of us on the floor, I don't know how they made their arrangements, but we got up there. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, somebody bust up in the house. Hey, what's up up in here? What's up? Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. So we're trying to sleep. And, the, and, the, and so the person wasn't rocking the place. They had a key to get in. Hey, what's going on there? What is it? What is And had a bag that was this big. A, you know, a paper bag. So, I, 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 so I'm like, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Nobody's going to have any, you know, Chinese food. We, the, the bag opens up. This boy pulls out some joints that were perfectly rolled. I mean every, I, I mean everything was right. <laughs> Y'all don't know anything about that. I mean, uh, <laughs> so I mean everything. And go like, what are you, what are you, what are you? Hey, I hear that. Hey, take it, come on, James, like James Brown. Yeah, take it, take it, take it. And so my, so my teammate, there were four of us over there. At three o'clock in the morning, they started taking a hit of joints in me. First of all, I can't get home. <laughs> Don't know where I am. If I call the police, I can't give them the address. And this man come up here all drunk himself and high, and my classmates, my teammates, are getting high. He gives them, hey, 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 And so I said, I went to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom, tub with his neck. I went into the bathroom. I got some towels. Now, see, here's the thing. Now, now this is what the point is now. Y'all forget the days when you had hair, Uncle Ron and myself, when we had hair. What would happen if you had an afro around smoke? You can't get in the afro, you're smoking your hair, man, I'm telling you. So I went and I got the towels. I got in the tub. And from 3 o'clock in the morning till somebody had to come to the bathroom at 7 o'clock, I'm in the tub with towels over my head. Now, I wish it could say because I was so holy. I just went in the smoke in my ass. So I got in there. But so all the, so that would happen. So when we got back, I got teased about that for the rest of our time playing. What happened? Not one of them went to college. Two of them are dead. Now, I'm not saying it's because of that. I'm just saying, what I'm saying is, you can't go with the destiny of ordinary people when God has an extraordinary destiny laid out for you. I didn't know at that point when I'm in the tour right here trying to keep my ass permit that I have the privilege of being here to, to, to preach at this point, but I knew that I'm not going to fit in with this crowd. I knew that nobody was around to look. My mama wasn't there. T.T. wasn't around. But I knew that I could not go through here in a foreign place, don't even know where I am, and go get high with some good, some drunks already out there. And then these boys were still so high when it's time for the game. They walk around here dribbling and the ball is gone over there. They're still dribbling. So at some point, you got to know that you are not normal. Yeah. Stop trying to fit in with folk that are ordinary right. when you're extraordinary. Stop, I don't care what happened over here, over here. All I know of in the, in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, that there was darkness in Egypt, but light in Goshen. Goshen represents God's folk. There ought to be some light shining wherever you are. I don't care what's going on in the world. You are extraordinary. I'm not going to go down and normal. So here's the point. So when they say you're not normal, you have to stop and saying, yes, I am. Say, oh, praise God, I'm not. Because I am extraordinary. We keep trying to make no sense. Go try to fit in places we don't, even, we don't even belong. Even David showed us when he was about to fight Goliath, Saul Tried to give Saul said, David, take my arm. David tried to own and said it didn't fit me and had to give it back. What's what happened to believers? You try to take some advice from folk and it doesn't fit. Recommendation from folk and it doesn't fit. How are you gonna be married taking advice from some single folk who want your spouse? At some point you gotta go back in and say. And then some of y'all say, take them. Yeah, at, some, at some point you gotta say, no, no. I know what the King James says, he had not proved. You gotta make sure at this point that when somebody's gonna impart into your life, 
They have the, they earned the right and they earned the privilege to speak into your life. They're going to speak life into your life, but they're going to speak death into your life. And don't let folk who are ex not extraordinary speak into your life. How is somebody normal going to speak into your life when you're extraordinary? You're supposed to be speaking life into them because you already are extraordinary. Read it with me again. I am not normal. Keep going. I am extraordinary. Come on, give God another hand. Have a great day right here. So what's the difference then? What's the difference between the people that are here watching our Periscope, watching online, that are now going to live an extraordinary life versus those that will continue to live an ordinary life? This is it right here. You know it. Mindset. You got to have your mind set that your default is extraordinary. Your default cannot be ordinary. The default, my norm, my, my ordinary, extraordinary life, my default has to now be extraordinary. And have an expectation to have an extraordinary life. Now, what's, what's the mindset? Read this with me, please. It's a set of beliefs or a way, one, or one, or a, a way of thinking that determines one's behavior, outlook. So here's the point right here. What are we saying right here? So here's what the Greek, what does it say from Proverbs 20, 23, 7? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If I think I'm a little kitty cat, not that kitty cat, I'm going to be. Even though I'm destined to be a lion, if I think I'm a victim, I'm going to be it. Even though I'm destined to be a victor. If I think I'm going to remain in the valley, I will stay there. Even though I'm destined to always have victory. If I think I'm always going to be surrounded by trouble, I'm going to stay there instead of knowing I'm already triumphant in all areas. If I think I have been overcome, I'm going to stay there. Instead of saying I've already overcome, I'm going to stay there. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are we saying right here? What's, you got to change the way you see yourself. Yes. You got this. It, it, it is, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It is time. For us to start, stop looking at ourselves through our own eyes. The first thing we say, I'm a visionary. What I what see myself as. So our point is, we have a, a misunderstanding of how God sees us. He doesn't see us in our sin. He doesn't see us in our slips. He does not see us in our slip like wearing. He doesn't see us in our shortcomings. When God looks at us now, it's through the blood of Jesus. So all he sees is the righteousness of God. So if you go to God now saying, God, I'm just sorry for that. He said, I don't even know what you're talking about. Because I now see you through the eyes of my, the blood of my Jesus, of my son. Well, let me make a live for you. I, I told you all before, Charles Stanley, I, I, I loved him over the years. And, and I remember him saying he was into photography. And he had a red object right here. And he was in, in taking a picture. So if, you, if, a, if a red object is right here, and you take a picture, what should it be? Great. It's not, that's not a difficult question. So it happened, but he forgot to change his lens and kept a red lens on his camera. And when he looked at the same red object through a red lens, he saw something white. And he kept saying, he said, but he said, no, I'm getting old, what's happening? He was looking at a red object and looking through a red lens, and all he saw was white. So what happens now? So when God looks at us, he's not seeing our stains. He's not seeing our sins. He's not seeing our shortcomings. All he sees is his perfection of his son, Jesus. So now he sees the righteousness of God. He sees where we should be. And where it could be, and where we ought to be, if we start thinking right and have the right mindset. He sees us not where we are, but where we were destined to be as well. He, so it's, it's time for us to change the way we still, how we see ourselves. So here's the point everybody around us sees a lion. We see a pussycat. So maybe some other folks see it. At some point, we got to change and know I'm going to see myself as God destined to create me to see. So what does it say right here? Our mind set matters. I gotta set my mind at this point. What? What's what my mind said? Come on, read it again. I am. Now, I, I mean, when you go back and tell somebody this, 
Finish the sentence. <laughs> Don't go to work tomorrow tomorrow night normally. Like, girl, yeah, you just figured that out. You got to keep on going because the most important part is something extraordinary. Well, keep on going. Now, change your mindset. What's going to happen? The life is not going to get changed with the same old mindset. If I want new results, I got to have a what? See, so, so it's got to be more than listen to a message on Sundays about being extraordinary. We have to make a decision and make up our mind that our mind is set to live an extraordinary life. I have decided once and for all to have an extraordinary life. If anybody believes that, please give God one more thank you for me, please. So it's good for Let's write, uh, read this with me, please. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. I love this NIV. Please read this with me, please. Since then, keep going, you have been raised with Christ. I'm talking about believers now. Believers have been raised with Christ. Keep going. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And just in case we miss it in the first verse, verse 2, keep going. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So once again, we gave this analogy before. If you are driving a car and you put on cruise control, what happens when you push cruise control? If it works. <laughs> now, I know for some of us, it's been a minute, but before, if it works, what happens? Same. So what happens? So if you set it, now, 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 now don't let the speed limit be 55. You set it to 85. The, idea, you're, you're, the whole idea of setting it. So when you set it, it means if I go up a hill, I got the same speed. Go down the hill, got the same speed. What is that saying? Don't get too high for yourself when you forget who made the blessings possible. And don't get so low you don't think you'll ever rise again. Got to set your mind. Set your mind on things above. I'm going to set my mind going extraordinary. I'm going to set my mind when I got extraordinary members. I'm going to set my mind saying I have an extraordinary marriage. I'm going to set my mind saying I have extraordinary friends. I'm going to set my mind. And then the only way to get off of the cruise control is to do what? Take it off, hit the brakes. Two men of us never even said it. Or we said it for a minute and it hit the brakes. You can't be driving all of a sudden just hit the brakes. You got, at some point, you got whiplash. At some point, you got to see my mind is set. My default mode is being extraordinary. My ordinary, extraordinary life. I love that. Paul says, set your mind. Set, set mind. Your mind set matters. So now, let's read this last part. Read this together. I operate in a spirit of exceptional excellence. Keep going. I have decided once and for all to have an extraordinary life. Somebody please give God one more hand clap of praise today as well. All right, so, 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 so our sub-topic our sub, uh, or a uh, theme for this year as well is this part here. Finding joy in the journey. Amen, amen. Everybody in here is on a journey. And we have to make our minds up to find joy in the journey. Yeah, I, I know that every time coming to church is not always pleasant. Got to make up your mind, you're going to have joy. Sometimes you're going to agree to ride with somebody and they say they're going to pick up something, you know they're going to pick them up. <laughs> you got to find joy in that journey. I, when, when, we were, when we were at Morehouse, they were, I mean, I was a tallest, but all the, all the guys I hung around with, not all the friends, but my friends from Memphis were all six feet or higher and six feet or, or taller. And I was the tallest one. And we, and, and, Six of us wanted to go home back to Memphis from Atlanta to Memphis in a, a Toyota Self, a hatchback. And then the driver put his seat all the way back because he was going to be comfortable. So you got five of us in here looking like we, looking like we got some, some deformities trying to get home. We had to make a decision to find joy in the journey. It was hard to find joy in that journey because the person next to me was eating a bag of Funyuns and loved to talk. Ha! How are you doing? I'm like, I was all right, bro, for that. So that is, but we had to find joy in the journey. Everybody's on a journey. 
I got to make up my mind to find joy in the journey. Let me make this real clear. The, the very first long distance trip, my wife and I took, we, we were dating. And she, 